أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد by the barakah of Sidi Shaykh, Sidi Muhammad Fawzi al-Karkari, Qaddas Allah Sarra. Notes from lecture of May 26th, 2024. Part 2. Before starting this video, I would like to say that this work would never have seen the light without Sidi Shaykh. If something is wrong, it would be from myself and everything that is correct is from Sidi Shaykh. In the previous part of this lecture, Sidi Shaykh described the shape of the heavens and the earth based on verse 12 of Surah at talaq and the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, the first heaven compared to the second heaven is like a small ring thrown into a desert. The second heaven compared to the third heaven is like a small ring thrown into a desert, etc. Until he said that the seventh heaven compared to the footstool al-kursi is like a small ring thrown into a desert and the footstool compared to the throne al-arsh is like a small ring thrown into a desert. Sidi Shaykh described the shape of the seven earths as a pyramid and the shape of the seven heavens as a reversed pyramid with an ismuth barzakh between them so they do not collide. Sidi Shaykh explained that each earth is surrounded with a mount called Mount Qaf, Jabal Qaf. This mount cannot be crossed by anyone except for those who are permitted. Sidi Shaykh also explained that the heavens and the earths have gateways to pass through and this is not possible except with a sultan, in reference to verse 33 of Surah Ar-Rahman. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, O assembly of jinn and humans, if you can penetrate beyond the realms of the heavens and the earth, then do so, you cannot do without a sultan. In this part of the lecture, a disciple asked about whether the Kaaba represents the center of the heavens and the earths. Sidi Shaykh Qadassallahu Sallam explained that this is evident in the Kaaba in the Qibla, it's considered the center of the universe, the center of the heavens and the center of the earth. In the era of the Prophet, the Qibla was the holy house, Baytul Maqdis. In his ascension, Mi'raj, the Prophet was, was led to Baytul Maqdis and he ascended from there. At that time, Baytul Maqdis was the Qibla for prayer and the gate to penetrate the seven heavens. However, when the Prophet ﷺ immigrated to Al-Madina and the Qibla became the Kaaba, the gate changed and became the Kaaba. The Kaaba now is the gate to the heavens and the earth. Sidi Shaykh explained that this perspective emerges when considering this matter from a material and sensory standpoint, Al-Hiss wal Malmus. Sidi Shaykh added that as long as Allah says, O oh, assembly of jinn and humans, if you can penetrate beyond the realms of the heavens and the earth, it cannot be said that the Kaaba is the only gate to penetrate the heavens. It's important to note that in this verse, the word Aqtar is used. And this term, this Arabic term translates to regions or gates. O oh, assembly of jinn and humans, if you can penetrate beyond the regions or the gates of the heavens and the earth, then do so. This term, Aqtar, is plural, and that's why Sidi Shaykh explained that it's wrong to consider just one gate to penetrate the heavens. Sidi Shaykh explained further that Al Kaaba is considered one of the gates, among several, to penetrate the heavens. The key to these gates is the Sultan. If the Sultan is present, one can pass through the gates of the heavens and the earths. Sidi Shaykh added that Bayt al Maqdis, Al Kaaba, and the Mosque of the Prophet. Are all gates of the heavens and the earths. But the matter cannot be delimited to these three points, as there are other gates. The matter remains in the unseen, Ghaib, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and only He knows the number of these gates. Sidi Shaykh mentioned that the human intellect struggles to define the earth or the sky accurately. One even struggles to define accurately his own country. Has one needs an accurate description from someone who transcended this earth. When the Prophet ﷺ ascended, he mentioned that if one were to pass from the first to the second heaven, the first heaven with all of its vastness would be seen as a small ring thrown into a desert. 
In another hadith, he likened it to the size of a dirham or a dinar. The same for the second heaven, the third heaven, etc. Until he reached the footstool, Al-Kursi. Sinisha explained that it's not that the footstool is small, but the greatness of the throne, Al-Aj, makes the footstool appear like a small ring thrown into a desert. Sidi Shaykh added that when Allah says in the Qur'an that the footstool, Al-Kursi, encompasses the heavens and the earth, it means that the seven heavens are like a ring in the leg of the footstool, Saqul Kursi, and the footstool is like a ring in the leg of the throne, Al-Arsh. Sidi Shaykh mentioned that the reality of all these creatures, the heavens, the earth, the footstool and the throne, is light. If a person becomes light, and Allah reveals to him the veil of the light, he will see the footstool, Al-Kursi, as a chair, Kursi. He will see it with an inner side, different from the normal side. Allah will grant him the capability with which he can comprehend the Kursi, and he will realize that the normal intellect cannot comprehend the reality of the Kursi. It's important to note here that the Arabic word Kursi translates to a chair. Also, the footstool is called Kursi in Arabic. Siddi Shaykh explained that this is possible when one becomes as described in the Hadith Qudsi, and my servant continues to draw near to me with super irrigatory deeds until I love him. When I love him, I become his hearing with which he hears, his sight with which he sees, etc. That's when one comprehends the Qudsi, and that's why when the Prophet ﷺ described paradise, he says that there is what no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard of, and nobody has ever thought of. If the Prophet ﷺ were to spend eternity describing what exists in paradise, no one would comprehend him. Sidi Shaykh added that paradise contains trees, orchards, water, and more. Can one perceive it with ordinary sight? With the naked eye? Certainly not. If one were to see it with his physical eyes, he would burn. So in order to see it, Allah would provide for the person a power and luminous strength that conveys that word. When the Prophet ﷺ ascended, he did not ascend with the same power he possessed on earth. Instead, he was endowed with a power that enabled him to perceive the first heaven, the second heaven, paradise, hell, and everything he encountered during his ascension. Therefore, the true benefit to be derived from the ascension of the Prophet ﷺ lies not in the description of the places he visited, but rather in recognizing the greatness and luminosity of the Prophet ﷺ. No mind, thought, soul, or body can fully comprehend it. If an ordinary person were to gaze at the sun for a few minutes, his eyes would burn, and he might even lose his sight. However, when the Prophet ﷺ beheld hell and witnessed people being punished within it, he remained unaffected by its fire. Similarly, he observed people enjoying paradise, yet the intense luminosity of paradise did not affect him. When he reached the seventh heaven, to pierce and pass to Sidrat al muntaha meaning to the throne status, Arshiyya, of the All-Merciful, Sayyidina Jibreel السلام, said to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, If you advance, you will pass through, and if I advance, I will burn. It's as if Sayyidina Jibreel is saying that he cannot neither look at the station nor reach it. If he advances, his image, his luminous structure would burn. As for the Messenger, his skin, his hair, his flesh, and his blood would support this station. He can even live in that place and never return if he wants to. So that was all for this video. Alhamdulillah, الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا إن هدانا الله. لقد جاءت رسول ربنا بالحق. اللهم لك الحمد. اللهم لك الحمد. اللهم لك الحمد. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين أنك حميد مجيد. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين.